go again. Welcome everybody, second time around, to this live session with me, Ross Bridgeford, on how to get started on the alkaline diet the easy way. We just had a few little gremlins in the works there. Let's see if we can rock and roll this time. Um, today's session, like I said, is all about how to get started on the alkaline diet the easy way. And it's for you if you're just starting out. It's also for you if you have started or tried before and you need to restart. I know that a lot of people, they get started on a healthy lifestyle approach, including the alkaline diet. Things don't work out. We get stuck, we get confused, we get overwhelmed and we give it up. So this is for you as well. Today, what I want to explain to you is my philosophy about how to get started and how to live alkaline and to make it easy and effortless and fun and enjoyable so that it's not overwhelming and stressful and hard you know the journey from wherever you are now to wherever you want to be with your health no matter how big and wild your health goals are that journey to get there should be fun it should be effortless and uplifting and enjoyable and feel light and easy it shouldn't be a slog and that's kind of a big part of my mission a big part of my mission is obviously to get people out of um uh, fatigue and sickness and disease and into a place of health and vitality it's my mission to get people from feeling down and 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 upset about their health and their body to a place of feeling like super happy and enjoyable and and, and feeling like they're winning but the journey is just as important as the result right that is life so today i want to help get you started not only with the first actions to take when you want to get started on an alkaline diet but also the philosophy that sits behind it now we've just switched from one live stream to a new live stream and people have started coming across that's wonderful now there's going to be a couple of things this is where i got to there's going to be a couple of things um, that i mentioned throughout this so there will be some links for further reading and writing. And I'll pop those in in just a second. The first one, uh, actually, <clears throat> I'll pop them in all together so that we don't get lost. Now, when you're starting a new approach to health, be it the alkaline diet, the keto diet, the South Beach diet, whatever it's gonna be, <clears throat> it's really, really important that you start in the right way. And in my 15, it's probably more like 16 years of coaching the alkaline diet now, I've coached tens of thousands of people to live alkaline and do it enjoyably. The most important thing is that you go into this with the right mindset. So that's where you wanna start. And there's two really key important points, important shifts for most people that I want to explain. And the first thing, is about perfection and this is the biggest mistake people make when they're getting started is they strive for perfection straight away you know they on you know from tomorrow my diet starts tomorrow and i'm not going to eat any of those foods ever again and i'm only going to eat these healthy foods for the rest of my life it just does not work the minute you tell the brain it can't have something, it's human nature, it's how we're wired, it will start looking for ways to try to find it. Particularly with health, without getting too sciencey about this, particularly with health, when you're dropping most of those foods that we consider in the standard Western, standard American diet, they typically are foods that will spike and drop your blood sugar, particularly sugar and gluten, will peak and trough your blood sugar, which has a knock-on effect to your hormones, your uh, leptin and your ghrelin and your adiponectin and your insulin. These will further exacerbate your brain's desire to try and seek those foods out. So when you go cold turkey with things and you drop everything all at once, you're setting yourself up for anxiety, for cravings, for trying to rely on your willpower. And the data is there now. We know scientifically so much about the will, uh, uh, the function of willpower. We've actually got about 15 minutes of willpower a day and willpower is used for every single decision you make. It's not only used for should I eat that cookie or not, it's used for everything. Should I get up? Should I hit the snooze button? What should I watch on TV? How should I get to work? what should I put in my little Timmy's lunchbox for school today? They all use up your willpower. Your willpower is also non-existent when your blood sugar is low, it runs off glucose. So trying to ditch everything all at once and then rely on willpower to power you through to only eating uh, spinach and kale, never gonna work. So rule number one, do not try to be perfect, do not rely on your willpower. Rule number two is take it slowly. 
step by step. We always say it in my coaching group, the Alkaline Base Camp. You'll hear me refer to the ABC or the Alkaline Base Camp all the time. We refer to it all the time, baby steps, one step at a time. And that's what today is all about, really. It's picking the one thing you're going to work on first, perfecting it, turning it into a habit, and then moving on to the next thing. When you start with this philosophy, you can feel the stress and the pressure disappear already. Now, everything that I teach, and, and, and this is gonna be very apparent in the steps that I'm gonna give you today, but everything that I teach is based around the philosophy, the framework of 80-20, Pareto's principle, whereby um, in any endeavor or in any natural occurrence in the world, 80% or more of the result is always based on 20% or less of the inputs. When it comes to your health, this is possibly even more. We actually flip it in the ABC and call it the 2080. 20% 20 or less of the actions you take will give you 80% or more of the goal that you are after. Think about that for a minute. Let that sit. Most people dramatically underestimate the benefits, the health benefits, the results that you can get from practicing a really, really, really small number of actions consistently. This is the cornerstone of what I teach and what I coach in the Alpine Basecamp. Massive results can come from tiny changes if you practice them consistently. Now, building consistency is all around forming habits, and we've got an ABC habit framework that we envelop all of this in. You're gonna get a little taste of that today, but I really, really want you to, to really feel that massive results can come from tiny changes. Don't think you've gotta do it all at once. Don't think you've gotta be perfect. Just focus on your first step. Only take that one step, forget everything else. All of the stress, all of the pressure disappears. Focus only on that step until you've got it absolutely mastered, until you've smashed it, and then move on to the next step. And I'm gonna give you two steps today, and you can pick one. In the Alkaline Base Camp, we've got what I call the four core actions, which goes into all of these in loads and loads of depth, and we've got the habit framework around each and every one of them. It makes it super simple. So when people join the ABC, this is all we focus on first. And this isn't a pitch for the ABC, by the way. The ABC is completely full at the minute. There's no way of getting into it, this is just giving you a snippet of how I teach and how I coach because I want to get you started. Like I've said many times, my passion is about getting you to the health of your dreams, but it's also about you enjoying that journey. So I'm going to pop a few comments in the comment box now. For all of you guys that are watching, give this video a like. Say hi in the chat box. Let me know where you're from in the world. And if you like what your health goal is right now, if you could change anything in your health, your diet, your body, right now at the click of fingers, what would it be? And if you've got any questions, put them in the chat box as well because I'm happy to answer any questions at the end of this session. This session is probably gonna go for about half an hour, 45 minutes at most, and then we can get into any questions as well. Hey Palmer, you've made it across. You've made it across. Apologies that you've just watched the intro twice and anyone else that has as well. So um, before we jump into those steps, it's worth a quick overview for anyone who's totally at the beginning of this as to what the Alkaline Diet is, um, what it isn't, and why it works so well. So um, you'll find a lot more info of this if you look in the comments pinned at the top. There's links to my food chart, uh, my book, The Alkaline Reset Cleanse, that I'll reference a few bits from during this, um, and the waitlist if you do want to join the Alkaline Base Camp as well. Um, in the food chart, there's loads of depths about what the alkaline diet is. Obviously, what foods are alkaline, what foods are uh, acidic. The basic premise here is the alkaline diet is about focusing most of your food and drink consumption. It doesn't have to be all. No, no perfection here in my group. Um, most of your food and beverage consumption on alkaline forming foods and away from acid forming foods. Hi Sarah as well, great to have you in here too and thank you for all the good stuff you do in this group. Um, so alkaline forming foods, you know, you, you if I said to you list 20 foods that you think are alkaline forming, if I took 
a thousand random people off the street and got them to do this, most of them would get it right about 80% right. It's intuitive, it's vegetables, it's leafy greens, it's salads, it's nuts and seeds, it's all those things your mum wanted you to eat when you were growing up. And it's not eating acid forming foods, which you also know are all the foods that are bad for you, sugar and gluten and pizza and chips and soda and all those other nasties, processed foods and bacon, dare I say it. Um, it makes sense, it's intuitive. All you need to do is focus mostly on these and away from these. It's simple, simple to understand, it can be complex to implement and that's why I'm here. Think of me as your implementation coach. Now, you don't have to be perfect, like I said, you can have a mostly alkaline meal with some acidic stuff in there as well or you can eat entirely alkaline stuff for most of the day and then have a cheat meal. It's very rule of thumb. People get really caught up on right. So if I want to be in sort of monthly sort of 70, 80% alkaline, does that mean in calories or in macronutrients or is it on the plate or is it at every meal or is it, forget all of that. Don't get bogged down in the minutia. Don't get stuck in detail. Just aim intuitively to be mostly eating alkaline forming foods. Okay, again, remove the stress. The other thing when you first get started is this, and this is really, really important, and this is something that I teach to all of my students, is focus first on getting the good stuff in. Don't worry about the bad stuff. If you still wanna have um, bad stuff, go for it, have it. Don't worry about it, just remove it from your head. Focus first on these baby steps, these core actions, and they're all built around getting good stuff in, not on removing the bad stuff. That's where you're gonna get undone. That's where you're gonna get stuck. The more you put the good in, the more it will crowd out the bad. I've got a whole training on this called Crowd Out the Bad. We're, that's the headline of it. Focus on getting the good stuff in. Don't worry about the bad stuff. The more you get the good stuff in, the fuller you will feel. Hunger is your body's cry for nutrients, not calories. We can talk about calories in the Q&A if you like. Um, and Catherine, yes, this will be on my Facebook page forever. You can watch it back whenever you like. Um, calories is, is a crazy measure for health. Uh, it's the measure of a unit of energy, nothing else. Um, and not even energy that you then feel. That's a whole other topic as well. Um, but yeah, just follow your intuition. Follow your instincts. The more you get the good stuff in, you will be nourishing yourselves, nourishing your body. Your liver and your kidneys can repair really quickly when you give it the tools it needs. Your endocrine system, all of the system of the organs and glands that, that manage and regulate all of your hormones, that can repair quickly when you give it the tools it needs. Your body cannot repair in an absence of nutrients. Sure, you can slow the damage if you stop eating sugar or gluten, for instance, but it cannot repair in an absence of nutrients. It needs nutrients to restore and repair and heal. So the first focus is on putting the good stuff in. And it also just makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? Doesn't that feel much lighter that, you know, if you just think about starting tomorrow and going, all I need to think about is getting the good stuff. And in getting the good stuff, all I'm going to do is focus on one of these two topics until I've smashed it, and then I'll move on to the next thing. Because I'm telling you now, doing one of these two things that I'm about to teach you will get you results quickly. And when you get results, that builds momentum. And when you get momentum, it builds confidence. And when you get confidence, it feeds back in. It's this beautiful loop, okay? But it starts with a little action, a little consistency, and you'll start seeing results really, really quickly. These are my two favorite places to start. We're going to start with the biggest, most impactful, bang for your buck thing that you can possibly do. Again, this is baby steps, and I'm gonna give you five tips on how to do this one thing today. Within that one thing, pick one tip that you can work with, until you've smashed that one tip and then move on to the next tip. The first topic is greens, greens, greens. If you want to heal your body, restore, repair, live alkaline, get that alkalinity infusing into your body, greens are the place to start. There is no more powerful bang for your buck place to start than with greens. So most governments around the world talk about five a day. 
five a day of fruits and vegetables. Now, that includes potatoes. That includes, I know in the UK at least, a tin of Heinz baked beans is included in that. It includes eating just a couple of bits of, you know, a couple of bananas. Um, and even then, most people are not hitting five a day. Even when you can have a tin of baked beans or frozen peas or potatoes, it's, they're not hitting five a day. We are suffering from, from a massive, massive deficiency in, I was going to say, all of the essential nutrients, but it goes beyond that. It goes beyond the essential nutrients to all <laughs> micronutrients. Most people are chronically deficient in vitamin D, in magnesium, in vitamin C, in omega-3. All of these nutrients that are so, so essential for your body to even function properly. Leafy greens in particular and cruciferous greens are the best source of these micronutrients, of these alkaline minerals, potassium and magnesium and manganese and selenium as a wonderful source of, of protein as well and healthy fats. Most people are not even getting five a day. Now, what I believe the recommendation should be is five a day of greens, just greens, ideally seven a day of greens. I'm telling you now, if you can focus all of your dieting energy, and I, I always do this because it isn't a diet. My goal is to turn this into an enjoyable, wonderful, effortless lifestyle. If you can focus and harbor all of that energy in on leafy greens and cruciferous greens like broccoli for the next seven days, and try to get five to seven serves of greens a day for seven days, your life will change. Forget everything else. Forget giving up sugar, forget giving up coffee, forget giving up a glass of red wine at night, forget giving up chocolate. You can still do all those things. Focus all of your energy into just getting five to seven serves of greens a day. Your life will change, I promise you. And again, when you then do this, when you get consistency with this, you will get results. When you get results, you will build momentum. And when you build momentum, you'll build confidence and that will build more consistency. And then you can move on to the next step. Now, I have got some handy tips for you to get started with this because it's all very well for me to say, go and get loads of greens. It's not the easiest thing in the world, I know. It's not naturally just something you go, great, got it, off I go. Most people will be thinking, um, I mean, yeah, gosh, I guess I could have a salad for dinner. Uh, but then what? So I've got some tips for you. Specifically, I've got five tips for you. Actually, it's probably, I'm going to add another one in. I've got six tips for you because the first two are kind of one and of the same thing. Now, the simplest, biggest way that you can get, um, I would say four to five serves of leafy greens in before you even leave the house in the morning is to get a consistent habit and routine around having a green juice or green smoothie every single day. This is so important, guys. I know you know that this is important, but this is super, super important. Now, when we're talking a green juice, we are talking, you know, classic green juice, cucumber, celery, spinach, lettuce, kale, or any combination of leafy greens. My green juice here, which I'm seeing where it's quite dark. It is quite dark. And that's because I literally just had loads of, um, sorry, I've got a green moustache now. Loads of rainbow chard in my fridge that I needed to use. So I made a juice, which is a little bit of cucumber, a little bit of celery, but then loads of rainbow chard, like a, a, a whole, bunch or two so it's really dark so you just use what you've got but any leafy greens i love to get ginger in there and turmeric there powerful powerful anti-inflammatories which is so important as well there's so many topics we could shoot off on here and i will be doing a live every week for the next few weeks who knows maybe i'm going same time same place so do tune into those um but uh yeah just getting cucumber and celery as your base and then as many leafy greens as you possibly can in there. Even getting some broccoli in there as well, because broccoli contains a wonderful compound called sulforaphane, which is hot, hot news in the research community right now. There's no end to the benefits coming from sulforaphane, but if you want to repair and heal cells and, and repair and restore DNA and 
get a massive flood of glutathione, which is your master antioxidant. To turn back the clock, you can do this. Turning back the clock is the focus in the Alkaline Base Camp at the moment. Our 10 years younger month we're into at the minute. My members just got their 10 years younger meal plans and recipes and shopping lists. And there's lots and lots of sulforaphane in there, I can promise you. Um, if you can make a juice like this each morning, you will be getting three, four, five serves of leafy greens into your body before you've even left the house. So important. Guys, if you just did that, it will change your life. Once a year in the Alkaline Base Camp, I run our seven day juice challenge, which is just about having a juice every day, forgetting everything else. If you're starting from zero, just doing that. And everyone gets ridiculous results. Everyone gets ridiculous results. It's so, so good to have that consistency. Now I have a hot tip for you. Make twice as much as you need and have the second one tomorrow. I've just halved your juicing time. Okay, it doesn't take a huge amount of time. It doesn't take a huge amount of energy to make a juice, particularly when you look at it relative to other stuff. You know, a lot of people say, I don't have time in the morning. I don't have time. Well, now you only need time at three morning, three and a half mornings a week because you're going to have the second serve tomorrow. Just put it in an airtight container, drop a cube of ice in it, get it in the fridge, light, heat and air are the enemies of the enzymes and the nutrients in the juice. That's what will destroy them, light, heat and air. Get it in an airtight container in the fridge, that juice will be absolutely fine tomorrow. Will it be perfect? No, it won't be 100% the same as the second you juice it, but it will still be 90% good and I would rather you get 90% good than not do it, if that makes sense. And you can apply that to it anything in life. It's better to be 90% good and do it than aim for perfection and not do it. Okay. Um, so yeah, simply doing that will change your health. It will change your life. Thank you for all the comments. And Kim, I've just answered your question um, from sunny Sydney as well. Scott, you're a good lad. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for supporting me. Alicia, hi Wickham. I nearly went to the university there to study music, engineering and production. What a different Facebook life this would be right now if I'd have done that. Um, Rachel, yes, I love that too. Um, so the flip side of this is a lot of people often go, oh, I haven't got a juicer, what juicer should I get or I can't afford one right now? The most important thing is just get any juicer. It doesn't need to be the best, it doesn't need to be the most funky. My favorite brand is the Hurom. Um, they have got two uh, out at the minute. They're both fantastic. The H100, I think it's called, the H200. Um, the 200 is the best. The 100 is still gives you just as good juice, but it isn't as easy. My, the, with the 200, they've got this big thing on top, and you literally just chop everything up roughly, chuck it in the top and walk off and come back later, and your juice is made like two minutes later. You don't have to feed it and, and do all of that jobbings. It just gets done, which I like. I mean, that's just amazing. Um, but both of them have got a new technology of, you know, the bit in the middle. Well, take a step back. I recommend the ju upright juicers that have got the slow gear that grinds rather than ones that go and have the mesh, if that makes sense. These ones, the, 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 the grinding thing is just two plastic things that's got any... You, you have to see it. It's hard to explain, but it's so, so easy to clean. It's so easy to wash up. You don't have to scrub. You don't have to have one of those little brushes and, and brush around all the metal bits. You just wash it under the tap and it's done in like 10 seconds. That's why I love Hurum. And it gives you loads and loads and loads of juice per vegetable that you put in. The yield is fantastic. But get any juicer. Get any juicer. Um, just get any. You can jump on Amazon, 50 bucks. You can get a, a slow, upright juicer. It will still do a really good job. Um, probably the downsides of it is you might have to chop your food up a bit smaller. It might get stuck on things like celery and carrots. Chop it up a bit smaller. And it will probably die after a year or so, especially if you're using it every day. Um, you know, that that's just the nature of it. But while you've got it, be putting aside whatever you can every month to save up for a hurrah. That's what I'd say. Now, if you don't have a juicer right now and you can't afford one right now, totally that's cool. You can make a smoothie. Most people, if they don't have a juicer, have got a blender. So on the flip side of this is have a juice or smoothie every day in that smoothie. You know, your baseline of avocado to make it nice and creamy. Um, your nut milk, whatever that's going to be, almond milk, coconut milk, 
um, macadamia milk, uh, chia milk, whatever it's going to be, and then get in your greens, get in your cucumber, get in your spinach, get in your kale, get in your silver beet, get in your chard, your watercress, whatever you like. Just get greens in there. Now, the benefit of a smoothie over juice is that you can put in loads of other wicked cool stuff like nuts and seeds and fats and things like cacao if you want to make it chocolatey um, like superfoods you can put in things like um, maca if you so desire that ashwagandha in both you can put in a green powder like a wheatgrass powder or something along those lines um, but either of these again smoothie make twice as much as you need put the second serve in the fridge for tomorrow you can freeze smoothies you can't freeze juices they don't freeze particularly well but smoothies you can freeze make a week's worth at once on a Sunday and you've got it every day just get it out of the fridge freezer the night before bingo you're away find ways to make this work for you even if it's not perfect find ways to make this work for you smoothies and juices are critically important they are such an easy button to getting if you do that every day i'm happy i'll see you next week on the next facebook live smash this for a week you will feel so good you will be like banging my door down for the next set of tips it works it works one of my earliest members in the abc robert um had an apparently irreversible kidney condition now it may be irreversible, but Robert doesn't have any symptoms of it right now and hasn't had for probably four years. All he did to begin with, instead of having his wheat bix or Weetabix, as it's called in the UK, um, I've really become an Australian now calling it Weetabix. Next thing I'll be talking about Vegemite. Um, don't have Vegemite. Um, he just swapped his wheat based gluten based cereal with milk in the morning swapped it for a big green smoothie that's all he did for a month and saw such results from that it gave him the momentum to add in the next thing and the next thing and the next thing he is completely symptom free of his kidney condition his fatigue went due to the kidney condition his fatigue went from couldn't walk up the driveway to collect his mail in the morning really really struggled to get his twins into the car and off to school in the morning to now he runs marathons that's the impact and it all started with just having a smoothie first thing in the morning baby steps guys baby steps it's so important for those of you who have got um my alkaline reset cleanse book or want it the link is in the thingy now um i think it's pretty good value on Amazon still you'll have to check it out um, if you do buy on Amazon let me have a look uh, the hardcover is slightly more expensive I guess they're a uh, limited edition now they're rare paperbacks pretty good Kindles pretty good um, if you uh, go and grab that the first section of the book my cleanse is split into before the cleanse during the cleanse after the cleanse all of the training in the before the cleanse is literally like what we're talking about today getting started baby steps really really important now um, there's many other ways you can get greens into your diet juices and smoothies aren't the only way and they won't get you all of the way to optimal so you might want to have some of these other tips as well my second favorite tip for getting greens in i love this one so so powerful and it feeds into that whole do what you want with the rest of your life thing just focus on the greens is to have a side salad with every meal you have not necessarily breakfast although you could if you've had your juice or your smoothie for or with your breakfast you've nailed that meal time but lunch and dinner no matter what else you have have a side salad if you're having pizza and chips, have a side salad. If you're having a steak, have a side salad. And I'm not talking about one of those little side salads you'd get like in a Weatherspoons pub, where it's like a wizened little bit of iceberg and a piece of tomato so thin you can see through it. I'm not talking about that. That's not a side salad, that's a garnish and not a very good one at that. I'm talking about two or three big handfuls of leafy greens in a bowl and, and at the other end of the spectrum, it doesn't have to be an, an elaborate pomegranate goat's cheese fig and 
you know, exotic sea greens salad either. It can just be two or three handfuls of any leafy green in the bowl, drizzle it with some nice uh, flax oil or olive oil or avocado oil, squeeze a lemon, bang, done. And the rule is you have to finish that side salad before you finish your meal. You can't finish the meal and then go on full and push the side salad away. You have to get that side salad finished. If you do this, two handfuls of leafy greens is probably one and a half to two serves per day of your greens. It's at least one serve. So if you do that for lunch and you do that for dinner, that's another two serves of greens that you've snuck into your day without any extra effort. That ABC is full of, this is what it's all about. It's about getting it into your life without any extra effort, making it a habit, putting it on autopilot. So you're barely even noticing it's happening, but you're getting alkaline and thriving and loving it. Next tip, <sighs> hiding greens, smuggling spinach. Another fave, again, because it plays into do whatever you're gonna do. So if you're having a curry, if you're having a soup, if you're having a, a pasta, if you're making bolognese, whatever you're doing, throw in spinach. Couple of handfuls of spinach into that meal. You know this, it disappears. It completely disappears. You can't taste it. This much spinach becomes this much spinach when you, when you cook it. Okay, so whenever you're having a curry, whenever you're having a pasta, whenever you're having any sort of sauce, any sort of soup, throw in a couple of handfuls of spinach, get sneak a couple of bits in there. The last one, and this is a good one because it's so important to get that sulforaphane like we talked about. So shaving broccoli into everything. All right, grab your broccoli by the stalk, get a sharp knife and shave it in. Salads, stir fries, again, sauces, soups, whatever you're making, any meal, you can shave in a serve of greens and it's all broccoli baby your kids won't even know it's there your partner won't know it's there but you're sneaking that goodness into them and they will love you for it when they're feeling amazing this is what i do to my kids all the time works an absolute wonder and it's another way to get a serve of greens in each day if you did two of these five tips you would get six to seven serves a day all right, this is simple stuff. It's keeping it easy, it's keeping it simple, it's making it effortless, it's turning it into a habit. Now, again, as I go through this stuff in the ABC, we do overlay my ABC habits framework over the top, which is all about you know making it obvious, making it simple, making it enjoyable, making it repeatable, making it rewarding, all these things that if you can add these little steps in, it turns it into a habit. We haven't got time to go through all of that today, obviously, but one simple step you can do is the making it obvious part of the framework, which is basically putting it right in front of your face every day so you can't ignore it. This works really well for things like the side salad, for hiding the greens, for shaving the broccoli, because you are linking a habit, a new habit that you want to form. If you link that habit to an existing habit, you remember to do it and you make it happen. So each time you make a meal, you make a side salad. Every time you make a meal, you make a side salad. You linking the habit of having lots and lots of salads with the habit of making a meal and it works a treat. Now, as we get into the second step, which I'll jump onto in just a second, you will see how powerful this making it obvious habit linking or habit stacking, as we sometimes call it, step can be. So that's part one. Well, part one was go easy on yourself, 80-20, one step at a time. Part two is greens, greens, greens. Before we move into part three, I just wanna to touch on supplements because this is a big thing with the greens. I wholeheartedly recommend you do have a green supplement every day along with your juice, you can even put it in your juice. Now, there's just a couple of rules I wanna to touch on with this. <clears throat> One is try to get a variety of greens in there, not just wheatgrass, although that would be better than nothing, but wheatgrass, barley grass, camot grass, dog grass, shave grass, beet grass, all, all of these beet greens, sorry, lots and lots of greens, lots and lots of grasses, lots of good stuff in there. Try to make sure it's organic, of course. Things to avoid, spirulina and chlorella are algae, 
They do contain lots of minerals, but they are mildly acid forming. So if you have a supplement with these in now, use it up. Don't throw it away. It's fine. But in an ideal world, get one that doesn't have those things. Mushrooms, again, use medicinal mushrooms, ideally prescribed by a traditional Chinese medical practitioner, because they are powerful and can, can be used pinpoint on specific things. Use them like that. Use them like a medical protocol. Don't just willy-nilly chuck a load in your green drink. That doesn't make sense. You, you just, it, they are acid forming again. They're a fungi. Um, they're a mold. They're acid forming. But they can be used really, really powerfully in a protocol from a, a Chinese medical practitioner. Um, so don't just have them willy-nilly in your green drink. Probiotics. Don't have those just ad hoc in your green drink either. Probiotics should be used very specifically. Once you have removed the bad bacteria from your gut, use probiotics to repopulate, and then you don't need them again. Don't have them just, I'm going to say it again, willy-nilly on a daily basis. Um, the Britishness in me is coming out a lot now, isn't it? Um, so they're the things I want you to avoid in there, but what the most important thing is get organic really really important um, and get a good spread of, of greens in there and have it every day have it every day now the second thing that i want to talk about today another core action that you can pick this one first if you want you can go with greens first or you can go with this one first this one is so simple it's like it's so simple it's almost it's undoing it's so simple people go oh yeah i know that and then they don't do it and it is proper hydration Come on, guys, so many people are sleepwalking through life in a daze with headaches, fatigued because they're dehydrated. So again, when people join the Alkaline Base Camp, the first thing we do is have a bit of a conversation. You get an email from me, I ask you a bunch of questions, and then I'll follow up with a load of tips and where to start, and we get you rocking and rolling and all those things. One of the questions is, What's your hydration like? How much water are you having on a daily basis? And so many people do this because they know it makes sense and they know they're not doing it. So when people typically go, yeah, my hydration's really rubbish. I, I you know, just drink loads of tea and coffee. We celebrate, we, it's a win because I know I'm gonna get them results really, really quickly and they can start right away. All you need to do is drink more water. It's so simple that it becomes complex. <laughs> because you need steps to make sure it happens. The two biggest impediments to getting properly hydrated, <clears throat> and I, I am getting thirsty now, talking all this much. The two biggest uh, impediments to not being properly hydrated <clears throat> are, and if you're enjoying this, hit the like button, give me an emoji, give me an emoticon. Um, hit that like button because it does make a big difference and it does help spread this to the other 18,500 people in this group. It will pop up on their news feeds when they log into Facebook if there's lots of likes and um, comments and those sorts of things. So do get involved. Do smash that like button, as they say. Um, the two biggest problems people have with regards to getting hydrated is one, they feel like they're bloated. If you go from dehydrated to drinking lots of water, it's like, oh my God. Oh. The second one is, um, and they need to pee all the time. The second one is, um, I just forget, I just forget. And I've done this, I, I used to do this all the time when I was first day. I was like, right, I'm gonna drink loads of water today. And then you start the day and then it's bedtime and you go, ah, I didn't drink any water. And it's no good just then drinking loads of water. That's not gonna work. It has to be nicely spread out throughout the day. Samantha, how are you doing? Lovely to see you on here. Always a pleasure to have you in my company. Um, Samantha has been part of my groups for a long time and has also got superb, superb results. Um, you may have seen her little case study video floating around um, over the years. She is an absolute rock star and someone who I am inspired by because she has achieved lots of amazing things with her health uh, with busy and difficult challenges and things that are just very inspiring. So. Samantha, awesome. Great to have you on the chat. So starting with the first, well, before we go into the two problems, we should probably talk about how much water and what type of water. Um, Scott has already said Royal Berkeley water filter. This is one option. 
just getting a one of them alkaline jugs, countertop jugs, which uh, these guys sell a good one. Okay. Whoa, that's poor spelling. Avocado Ninja. You can get a water jug from them. That's another option. You can get a Chanson Ionizer. That's another option. You, there's millions. There's millions of different things. Um, you've just got to... Um, let's. Sorry, just bear with me a minute. It's just saying I'm having a few little browser issues and I need to check it out. So I just need to refresh a couple of bits for a second. Just give me a second. Go on. Um, yeah, while I'm doing this, I can just say there's loads of different options. Don't let what type of water filter as a question stop you from taking action and bog you down. Get any type of filter. Any filtration you can get is amazing and it's going to serve you well. Any type of filtration. As long as you are filtering, that's the most important thing. And if you haven't got a filter yet, just tap water or bottled water is fine. It's not perfect. And ideally, you will start filtering, but it's fine. Sorry, I'm nearly there with all the refreshing. Refreshment, as I talk about hydration, um, any is fine. So you don't need to get bogged down in this. Again, done is better than perfect. That is really important. Um, all right, let's get back to where we're at. All right, it's saying we're all good again now. So don't worry about filtration. Like, don't let that bog down. How much water is enough? There is an equation for it, but for most people, it's around three to four liters a day, ideally, 100 to 120 fluid ounces a day, ideally. You don't have to go from zero to 100 in one day, build up slowly, one step at a time. Now, those two problems people have, one, bloating and needing to pee all the time. This disappears quickly, trust in the process. Build up slowly, after a week, that problem will disappear, I promise. I've got this little analogy of your body being like a dried up old sponge. Isn't that nice? When you're dehydrated though, think of your body like a dried up old sponge, right? Like a, that you clean your kitchen with. You start running under the tap and to begin with, the water will just bounce off it. But little by little, it will start to get absorbed at more and more and more and more until you reach the point where it's fully hydrated and fully saturated and it's holding tons of water before you then need to squeeze it, go for a pee, and then you can start filling it up again. That's what it's like. The more you hydrate, the less bloated you feel, the less you'll need to pee all the time, and it really does work. The other problem, which is one we're going to fix right now, is forgetting. Big problem. Big problem. Again, and it's because it doesn't find that important spot in your brain where your brain's gone, this is really important, this is really important, I'm going to do it. Because you just go, yeah, it's water, it's hydration, of course I'm going to drink water. Um, but drinking enough is critical. And again, if you're struggling with candida or fatigue or inflammation or excess weight, aches and pains, um, skin conditions, uh, cognitive fatigue like fuzzy, foggy brain, um, digestive issues. Dehydration is contributing massively to those. So getting hydrated will move you forward measurably with any of those goals. Just getting hydrated, and it's so simple. Now, talking it back to the ABC habit framework, I'm going to dial in on the first step of the framework. It's a four-part framework on making it obvious and making it clear. The habit stacking approach that we have works so well with hydration. It works really well with any habit where you need to try to do something repeatedly throughout the day. So making a juice, you make that juice first thing in the morning, you do it, you get it done, you move on with your day. But hydration is something you need to remember to do throughout the day. Now, this is where habit stacking works really, really well. And habit stacking is linking a new habit to an existing habit that you are already doing. So when you do the thing you're already doing, you do the new thing over and over again. Within a very short period of time, seven to 14 days, the new habit will exist on its own. Really powerful, really simple. So what I want you to do is think about all the things you do on a daily basis out of habit. You wake up in the morning, you clean your teeth, you make breakfast, you commute to work for a lot of people, you arrive at work and sit at your desk, you have lunch, you travel home, you make dinner, you clean your teeth again. There might be other things like you might meditate or do yoga or go to the gym. You might take your kids to school or take your kids to sport 
which is my life now. Nobody warned me about this. Um, you, th there's loads of things. Each of our lives is different and each of us will have different things. But if you pick four or five of these and link having a big glass of water to each of those four or five things, you will smash your goal. When on top of that, you're having a couple of cups of herbal tea per day, your green juice or smoothie per day, you'll maybe have a couple of bottles of water with your green powder in it per day, you will find that you'll very quickly get to a goal. If you have a big glass of water when you wake up or a big lemon water when you wake up, whenever you brush your teeth, morning or night, big glass of water, you have a glass of water, a bottle of water on your way, on your commute, on your way to work. Just those five actions, if you're having a 500 milliliter glass of water, you have two and a half liters of water already for that day, and that's just five. Throw in a couple of cups of herbal tea, you're over three liters of water, and you're done, you're done, you're done. It's so simple, it's so easy, but just link your hydration habit to an existing habit. Problem solved. So if you're starting with hydration, start there, do that. Write down on a piece of paper <clears throat> three, four, five, maybe even six habits, things you do on a daily basis that you are going to link having a glass of water to those habits. Even if you're only 50% successful, you're probably going to double the amount of hydration you're getting at the moment, which will double your energy. I promise you, this works like gangbusters. Now, again, I want to reiterate. I want to reiterate. Don't do everything at once. Don't even be tempted to do both of these things at once. Pick one. Even if it only takes you three days before you're like, yep, yeah, it's okay, I've mastered it, it's nailed, it's in the bank, it's now a habit. Even if it only takes you a few days, start with one. Within the greens tips, pick one of those tips and do just that one and forget everything else for now. Just start small and build. This is how we teach it in the ABC. This is what my coaching is built around. When you get to 60, 70, 80% of your health goal, you will be so enthused and motivated and have so much momentum, you know. Your brain, it, there's, there is lots of psychology that sits behind this, but your, your conscious and subconscious brain will get reward from doing it this way. And the more benefit you get and the better you are feeling, the more you are going to want to do naturally and it will just come naturally and you will just find yourself doing more without it having to be a conscious effort. But it starts by getting early results and building momentum and getting confidence and that beautiful loop that we talked about earlier. Okay, When you start small, you give yourself a chance for success. When you try to do it all at once, you are immediately battling. You are immediately working with unbalanced hormones, blood sugar dips, no, like a, a complete loss of willpower, cravings, your brain seeking out the things that it's missing. Habits can be formed in a bad way as well as a good way, and it's a lot harder to break a bad habit than it is to form a good one. So let's start by forming those good habits and let the good crowd out the bad. You can do this, you can do this, and this is how you get started on the Alpine diet. Now guys, I will get into the questions right now. Um, let's have a look. I will get into the questions right now. Um, Marsha, if one of us has got the time wrong, it's 100% likely to be me. Um, but you can start this from the start, I, I believe I set it in the settings. Let's have a look that you can take it back to the start and, and replay from the start. So you can just take it back to the start if you like. Um, and anyone else, if I've got the time wrong, I, it was probably me that got the time wrong. I'm, I'm working on multiple time zones at the moment. Um, so questions, get them in there now. For you guys, what I want you to remember is taking it slow, building from the start, um, and this is, this is the way I teach, this is the way I coach, this is the way I do things. Everything that I teach has got a scientific basis. All of the health um, advice that I give is based on sci rigorous scientific uh, studies and data and evidence. All of the foods that I suggest, the entirety of the alkaline diet is ba backed by scientific evidence. 
All the foods I suggest, the things that I say you should cut out are all based in studies. I do not tell you to do anything that hasn't been rigorously proven in the data. And so it goes for the way I teach. It's all based in the psychology, uh, the science of psychology in the brain. Um, this is all tried and tested stuff. If you would like to join me in the Alpine Base Camp, jump on that waiting list. It's the bottom link of the three. In the meantime, if you haven't got my food chart, you can grab that there. If you haven't got my book, you can grab that there too. They're simple ways to get started, but jump on that wait list. If you do want more coaching from me in the Alpine Base Camp, we, I coach very, very personally with everybody in that group. I'm always available. Um, each Friday, I deliver a new little bite-sized coaching. Um, there's lots of recipes. There's lots of live sessions like this. We do Q&A sessions. We do interviews. Um, there's deep dive masterclasses on things like hormone reset, um, someone, Tina, on things like cancer prevention, um, on uh, inflammation, on digestive healing, on reflux. We go deep on those topics each month. Um, and, it's, it's, and it's just a great community. It's just a fantastic community where I am active every day. We share recipes, we have a laugh, we support each other. It's fantastic. So if you want to be part of the ABC, you can join that wait list. In the meantime, grab the food chart, grab the book, and let's get into some uh, questions in the Q&A. For those of you joining now, don't forget to smash that like button. All right, if you've got a question that you asked earlier, and I don't get to it, it might have disappeared off my feed, so just type it in again. Um, Palmy, having smoothies and juices on a daily basis has been a game changer for me. High fives to you too. Um, Rachel, my first habit was to start every day with a turmeric latte. Yeah, getting into the anti-inflammatory piece is something that I wondered if I would do today, but we didn't have time to do that. Um, and a great tip as well, buying the fresh turmeric and ginger, peeling them, freezing them, and then just having a little bit each day. Um, all right, can you keep uh, your juice or should it be stored for the next day? We've covered that. Um, as long as your juice is put into an air tight container in the fridge. Um, Heidi, I realize this is very subjective, but in your years of experience, how long does it normally take before an individual starts seeing a bit of results from the diet? Thanks. Depends on the goal. It is highly subjective. Depends on the goal. Depends on where the person has come from with their history of eating and, and health and what they're doing now. Um, you know, for let me give you how subjective this is as an example with weight loss. So with weight loss, everyone's reason their body has gained weight and, and held on to fat cells in the first place is individual, but it can typically be grouped into a bunch of different groups. If the reason is because of um, uh, adrenal fatigue, a hormone imbalance, particularly with adrenal fatigue, that can take a long time to heal and undo. And the reason with adrenal fatigue, the reason the body is hanging on to those fat cells is because the constant spike of cortisol um, and, the, and the, 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 the triggering of the adrenals all day, every day, is putting your body into fight or flight mode constantly. In fight or flight mode, the message that your brain is getting is famine is coming, famine is coming hold on to everything, store lots of fat for energy. We can use that later. So in those instances, someone that would have um, excess weight because of adrenal fatigue compared to someone who has excess weight because of uh, a, a digestive imbalance, for instance, digestion is a lot quicker and easier to heal than your adrenals. So for that person, the results can be like, first week, you could lose four or five pounds in a week, maybe more. You know, we've got people like um, Eugenia who did the bef just the, in the before section of doing the cleanse. She lost seven pounds in the first week. She did the cleanse, lost another seven to ten pounds, I think. And then she did the after the phase and lost like another five or six pounds. That for her, it was just immediate. Uh, Jennifer, another one who just in that before section of the cleanse, she did just that before section, which is not dissimilar to what I've taught you today. Those simple actions stacked together. She did that for 
21 days and lost 28 pounds. So that for her, she that clearly wasn't an adrenal fatigue issue. Um, so it is subjective like that. If you're coming from a place where it's something like reflux or type two diabetes or digestive issues or candida issues, you will see results within a week. You will see some results within a day or two. Um, but consistency being the most important thing over a week or two, you'll see fantastic results. But yes, it is subjective. What is classed as one serve of greens? That is also slightly subjective. Lots of people have got different measures for this. Typically, it's between 60 to 80 grams for most leafy greens. Um, so it depends on how much the thing weighs. Um, but for leafy greens, I typically look at a big, like, handful of spinach or kale um, or watercress or chard big handful like this is a serve is a serve um let's have a look rachel goes and orders juicer i love that um da, da, da. can you put healthy weight on living alkaline 100 percent, 100 percent being underweight is as much a result of uh, imbalance with your pH as being overweight is. And that's the thing with weight is, you know, people get so fixated on calories. Um, calories have got absolutely nothing to do with anything, honestly, when it comes to, look, if you are an elite performer who is, you know, elite bodybuilding type thing, they can be a useful measure alongside other measures. For everyone else, it's a completely useless measure, or certainly it's an irrelevant measure. Um, your body's decision, <laughs> for want of a better word, to create and store fat cells is based far more in your hormone balance than in the calories. It's based far more in your digestive balance than in calories. And this is the thing, it's all about balance and imbalance across your body's what I call your five master systems of your pH balancing system, your immune system, digestive system, endocrine system, and the detoxification system of your liver and your kidneys. So if there's imbalance in any of those areas, you can gain weight, absolutely. Your body will look to create and hold on to fat cells. You know, if there's a lot of inflammation in your body, you know, when someone's consuming a lot of uh, concentrated fructose, like high sugar, uh, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup. Um, when that fructose hits your liver, your liver will create a lot of inflammation, inflammatory uh, markers, cytokines, and your uh, liver will create a lot of fat cells. Um, you know, when you uh, uh, consume, or oh, sorry, yes, when you consume a lot of fructose, the, the, the uh, the outcome of that, the byproducts of that, is your body will create a lot of uric acid, which will drive your blood pH down. When your blood pH goes down, your uh, body will produce overproduce cortisol, which then leads to adrenal fatigue, which can then lead to your body being fight or flight and holding on to fat cells further. There's lots of different ways that your body will create and store fat cells. Calories is not a good measure of this. It's not a good measure of this. And we could go into this all day long. To your question though, Scott, <laughs> being overweight is an imbalance in your body. Being underweight is an imbalance in your body. It's predominantly usually an imbalance in the digestive system, um, but restoring balance, eating lots of healthy alkaline foods, healthy fats, leafy greens, alkaline sources of protein, lots of fiber, um, nourishing your body, getting lots of um, magnesium, potassium, sodium, calcium in particular, um, when you put your body back into balance, it will naturally gain weight healthily to where you should be. If, of course, then you add in some form of resistance exercise as well, you'll build more muscle weight on top of that. But yes, 100%, the alkaline diet is not a weight loss diet. It is a body balancing, body healing diet. Being overweight or underweight is a symptom of imbalance. So when you balance, restore that balance and heal your body, you will restore your natural healthy weight. All right. Um, I have iron saturation, so how do I hide spinach or supplements? I need to find food that won't absorb iron. 
So <clears throat> with this, Kim, what I would look to is iron supplements as a lookout. Iron in foods is going to be less of a concern. Um, the way your body handles iron. So this is the same for people that have too little iron if they're anemic. The solution isn't always to then consume loads of iron because it's not just about the amount of iron going in, it's the way your body stores iron and the way your body utilizes iron. When you've got iron saturation or too much iron in your body, that is also a, uh, a mechanism of how your body stores iron and utilizes iron and gets rid of excess iron. Um, both of these things will be healed by eating well or the, the healing will be contributed to by eating well by eating alkaline, eating high nutrient dense foods. The way your body utilizes minerals and vitamins and essential uh, micronutrients in foods is very different to how it handles those nutrients that are synthetically made and put into pills and tablets and capsules. So it's the same for things like people go, oh my gosh, you know, two, I can't have vitamin K, I can't have vitamin K, and there's so much vitamin K in leafy greens. The vitamin K and leafy greens, your body can use and get rid of effortlessly. It doesn't store, it doesn't over contribute, any of those things. The vitamin K that's in synthetic fortified cereals, for instance, and vitamin K supplements is completely differently handled by the body, completely differently. So you just need to trust in nature and trust in those foods. Um, of course, you can moderate that a little bit if you want. You know, you can look to higher iron vegetables if you want to play it completely safe. But from my perspective, and this is just my opinion, this isn't a medical diagnosis, blah, 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 the way that it's shown beyond question that the way the body utilizes nutrients from foods is very different to that from supplements or fortification in, in man-made ways. So um, don't stress too much about that. Darlene, you are evidence number two in the witness stand that it may be me that got the time wrong, not anyone else. It wouldn't be the first time I've got my time zones mixed up. When did the time zones change? I've only just got used to them changing in Australia. When did they change in America? Um, probably since I sent the email promoting this thing. Anyway, Darlene, what you can do and anyone else joining live now going, hey, 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 hang on, he's already been on for an hour you can scroll this back to the beginning. Thank goodness, a new feature on Facebook Lives that I didn't know existed until today. You can replay it all the way back to the start. And as soon as this finishes, which is gonna be in the next couple of minutes, it will go back to the start anyway, if you wanna watch it from the start. So Darlene, feel free to put your questions in. You know Darlene has been in my Alkaline Base Camp for a while. She is an absolute rock star. And she knows that she can drop me an email whenever she wants if she's got any questions, because that's what life's like in the Alpine Base Camp. And Darlene, I will drop you an email to uh, so you can just hit reply if you have any questions. Um, uh, and um, Scott has just, this is what happens when I'm doing a QA, and a and as soon as I say, we're about to wrap up, another question comes in. So organic nuts are not bad for you if they're not soaked. There is an argument that they are slightly more bioavailable, the nutrients, if they are soaked. And let's face it, they're more enjoyable. There's nothing nicer than a plump almond. Um, but you don't, again, don't get bogged down in the detail. Um, and Scott, I know, I know your history and I know your background and I know how far you've come. And, and I believe that you are on the money with that comment 100%. It's going to take time, buddy. It's just time, keep doing what you're doing because you are doing an absolutely amazing job. All right, now, I think that's all the questions. Pixie, how's it going? Um, don't forget, everyone watching, hit that like button, hit that love button. Um, it helps to spread the word to everyone else that's in this beautiful Facebook group. Um, and that pretty much wraps it up. Now, next, this week, uh, sorry, next week at the correct time of 4.30 New York time, we're going to have our next session. 
Uh, the next session will be my alkaline morning routine. What I do in the morning to make sure every day is a massive, massive win. In very little time, you can get your day off to a massive win. I'm gonna be going through that process. We'll have more Q&A. If you've got questions on this session, put them in the chat box. I will keep coming back and checking the comments to make sure I've covered everything. Um, Dolores, just you can just scroll it all back to the start. I'm an hour early, it turns out. You're not an hour late. So I'm going to stop talking about that now because it's embarrassing. And I'm going to bid you all a fantastic day. Um, I hope you'll have a wonderful day um, and a wonderful uh, week. I will be in the group answering your questions as ever. Again, if you want to get started with the food chart, the link's there. If you want to grab my book, which has got tons more of the type of info we've talked about today, and you can grab that too. Um, and if you want to join the wait list to jump into my uh, Alkaline Basecamp uh, coaching group, joining the likes of Darlene, Pixie, Sam, and Palmy, you can do that. There's the wait list link there. So peace out, guys. Love you guys. And let's do this again next Monday at 4.30 that time. Love you all. Take care. Thank you.